Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callas, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Which license works best for me? So this is a question I ask everybody who first comes into me to to ask about learning to fly is what is it you want to achieve with your license when you get it? Because depending on what the end goal is, I'm going to offer you different advice. So think about what it is you want to do with that license. Is it that you just want to take a couple of three friends flying in the UK, good weather conditions in the daytime, single engine aircraft, Or perhaps you've got a vision that at some point you might want to become a flight instructor or you might want to fly multi-engine aircraft or you might want to fly in instrument conditions. So instrument conditions are non-visual conditions. So effectively you can't see out of the window. You're you're relying on your instruments to um, orientate the aircraft and navigate. Um, Or perhaps you want to be a full-blown commercial pilot and fly people on their holidays in Boeing 737s or or whatever it is. So think about the end goal and then make a decision based around what best fits that. Okay, so there are currently two licenses available uh, for recreational flying. One of them is solely a recreational license though. So the LAPL which is the Light Aeroplane Pilot's License, um, is its whole purpose is for recreational flying in single engine aircraft. However, the Private Pilot's License, the PPL, is the starting point for any modular training that you would take towards becoming a commercial pilot. So let's have a look at the licenses and see what the the main differences are. So the LAPL, who's it best suited to? Uh, Pilots who are looking to fly friends and family around the UK only in good weather conditions. They're looking for a cheaper route to general, general aviation flying. Have reasons why a class two medical required for the PPL is not achievable for them. Have a desire have sorry have no desire uh, for a flying career have no desire to progress to multi-engine aircraft have no desire to get any additional ratings other than aerobatic or night rating have no desire to fly aircraft above 2000 kilograms have no desire to take more than three passengers or fly into europe now, actually, that sounds like a you know fairly negative. Now, if actually, if I took around about 80%, 80 percent, eighty eighty five percent of the people who fly with us that are not going on to commercial, um, I would say that a, an LAPL fits the bill for for the majority of them. Okay, um, one of the great things about the PPL, so the the LAPL, is the minimum hours are reduced to 30 hours the PPL is 45 so when you take that on a cost comparison um, the LAPL is always cheaper to obtain uh, than the PPL and quite often it can be as much as three thousand pounds cheaper now the course is is shorter as well so it's quicker to obtain Um, you do have a less restrictive medical on the LAPL. The LAPL actually has its own medical called the LAPL medical. Now for older people who perhaps are concerned about the medical or perhaps have uh, issues that prevent them from uh, perhaps obtaining a class 2 medical they may still be fit enough to obtain a LAPL medical. So for people who are slightly older um, we find that a lot of them, even if they've had a PPL, a lot of them are actually downgrading to LAPL now, uh, just because the medical is easier for them to keep. Also, one of the uh, really nice things about the LAPL is the currency requirements. So when you have a license, you need to keep that license current. And the LAPL is slightly simpler than the, the PPL currency requirements so you need to fly 12 hours in a two-year rolling period to remain current 
with the LAPL and you need to do uh, an hour with an instructor. So yeah, it's it's a great license. So in a nutshell, these are the key facts about the LAPL. It's a 30 hour minimum course. The majority of people do take 10 to 15 hours more than that. There are six hours solo flight within that course. So when I say solo, that means you're flying the aeroplane by yourself under the supervision of your instructor, usually on the ground. So they will have helped you plan these flights and they will be monitoring you from the ground until you return. Your final um, solo flight is usually what they call the cross-country qualifying flight. Now for LAPL, it's 80 nautical miles in distance and you must land away at one other airfield other than the one you departed from. The restrictions on the license are you're restricted to a single engine aircraft, single engine piston aircraft, okay, that's quite important, of 2,000 kilograms or below. Now, actually, that's quite a, you know, quite a heavy aircraft uh, in light aircraft terms. Um, you can take up to three passengers, okay? So you're restricted to 2,000 kilograms, single engine piston, up to three passengers, and you must have completed 10 hours piloting command post license issue before taking a passenger. Now, I think that's quite sensible. You know, if you if you were incredibly lucky and you passed in 30 hours, 30 hours is no time at all in an aircraft uh, to be even considering taking passengers. So I think that's fairly sensible. Now, you can get additional ratings for the LAPL. You can get an aerobatic rating, so you can perform aerobatics in a, an aerobatic aircraft. And you can fly at night if you get a night rating. So you can get an aerobatic rating and a night rating. But those are the only two ratings you can get with an LAPL. Now, it's not the end of the road. If you do get an LAPL, you can convert to a PPL, providing that you can get the class two medical that's required. And then it's a 15 hour course and a test to get you to PPL, which will cover the items which were removed, if you like to make the course shorter. So like I say, it's a great license for people who are just looking to fly in the UK. They they don't want to take any more than three passengers. And in all honesty, uh, you, you're going to struggle to find aircraft that people are willing to lend you that can carry more than three passengers anyway, in most uh, flying schools or rental companies. And like I say, you've got to do that 10 hours before you take a passenger which I think is, is sensible and you can only get the aerobatic or night rating so like I say for most people there's actually quite a lot of advantages to having that license you've got the more relaxed currency rules the more relaxed medical it's cheaper to obtain in the first place and it does most of the things that most people I, I meet that are just flying for recreation do anyway um, so yeah like I say it's UK only three passengers max and up to 2,000 kilograms and you've got to do this 10 hours pilot in command before taking passengers. Now one thing to be aware of though is that if you start down a course of training you can only switch within the, fir the first few hours of training if you want if you're part into a uh, you know if you're part into an LAPL you're on an LAPL course. The training is is pretty much identical okay and um, there are a couple of things removed from the training to make the course shorter but once you're training towards an LAPL or a PPL you're on that course so you need to make a good decision early about which license works best for you okay so that's the LAPL the light aircraft pilots license and like I say I think that's a really good license for people who just want to fly in the UK for recreational purposes so let's look at the traditional private pilot's license. Now that is a minimum course of 45 hours. Now the majority of students take again 10 to 15 hours more than that. Okay, There are more solo hours in the LAPL so there's 10 solo hours. And the cross country qualifying flight is 150 nautical miles and two landaways. So it's a bigger cross country uh, qualifying flight with an extra airfield to land at. Now in terms of the restrictions on that license you can be pilot in command for non-commercial gain. So that's the same for both licenses by the way so you can't earn money from these licenses. Okay, They are recreational licenses 
Um, the only caveat to that is with a PPL, if you were to get an FI, a flight instructor rating, um, or a CRI, class, uh, class rating instructor, um, you could be paid for those jobs. Uh, however, an FI would be limited to what you could teach based on the fact that you only had a PPL license. Okay, so to, to have a full FI ticket, you need um, to have a commercial license. So what can you do with your license when you get it? You can get any amount of additional ratings, basically. This is a starting point for any modular training uh, towards commercial. So you can get an IR, an instrument rating. You can get MEP, multi-engine piston. You can get aerobatics, night rating. Uh, you can move on to a commercial license, a CPL. Um, so you can move all the way through to a commercial training um, from that point. So anybody who's got any of those ideas about whether they want to be a commercial pilot or perhaps they just want to be a flight instructor um, or you know they want to get an instrument rating so they want to be able to fly in instrument conditions then you need to be looking at a PPL license okay now the medical that's required for the PPL is the class 2 medical now both the LAPL and the class 2 medicals are valid for five years when you're 40 or under OK, now after that point, the frequency changes depending on your age. So the last thing to say about the PPL really is the uh, currency. So you have an SEP rating on your PPL license that is valid for two years. So that's a huge difference again between the PPL and the LAPL. The LAPL is an SEP single engine piston license. OK, the PPL is its own license and has an SCP rating attached to it. The license is lifetime, but the SCP rating is only valid for two years. OK, so to keep that current, you need to do 12 hours minimum in the preceding 12 months to the expiry of your SEP. So effectively, you need to do 12 hours in the last 12 months of a 24 month period that needs some consideration as well because a lot of people that are only flying recreationally really struggle to fly enough to keep current and that poses problems with getting SEP revalidated and and, and also with their own um, abilities as well so if you're thinking about learning to fly I always say to people, you need to be thinking that after you pass, that you're going to fly at least once a month to remain safe. Regardless of whether you're doing a LAPL or a PPL, uh, that would be my recommendation. However, the law states that the currency is 12 hours in the preceding 12 months to your SEP expiry. Um, and that is the requirement. So that's, that's both of the two licenses. So the LAPL, strictly recreational. Um, but it's a great license, it really is. There are huge benefits in having an LAPL for somebody who generally just wants to fly in the UK with a couple of friends, um, and it's a cheaper alternative and easier to, to keep it uh, current. The PPL, that's an ICAO uh, recognised uh, license, so you will be able to uh, use that abroad, uh, depending on, on what country it is, you can use that abroad. Um, and it's, you know, it's recognised uh, all around the world. So you can, um, you know, certain countries have different rules and things. So you do have to get retraining in some instances. But certainly for Europe, you can fly um, on a PPL without a problem. So if you've got any sort of uh, consideration about whether you're going to go and fly in Europe or you want to have an instrument rating, multi-engine piston or any commercial training after that, the PPL would be the license I would recommend for you. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.